half the world's biggest companies are downsizing office space amid hybrid <laughs> working. This is an insider story. Here we go. Um, defined as half the world's largest companies, defined as those with over 50,000 employees, plan to downsize their office space by 10 to 20% by 2026. That's a real number, by the way. As hybrid working becomes more prevalent, while many companies are embracing hybrid work, 31% are adopting an office-first approach. The shift in office space strategy is driven by a broader range of business factors beyond the pandemic, with companies seeking to optimize their office usage and offer flexibility to employees. However, 55% of all surveyed companies anticipate increasing their office footprints in the next three years, particularly mid-sized companies. So bigger companies are downsizing. Smaller to mid-sized companies are getting more office space. Tom, when you see this, what do you think about with this article? Well, the first thing is, you know, your government under the cover of COVID, you know, sort of was pushing the agenda for work from home and forcing lockdowns. And what they have unwittingly done is triggered a waterfall. And I'm speaking to you, Joe Biden, is triggered a waterfall that is about to be a calamity in commercial real estate. Because now the companies are saying, well, maybe I can't there's two sides to it. There are companies that are asking people to come back to work, and we're seeing those um, announcements every day. Apple says people got to come back to work. Amazon says, and all the people get upset. Well, then what you don't see is underneath it all is the companies that say, well, may, we be, maybe I can make some of the remote work for cost reasons, and those people are not getting promoted, and maybe I need less office space, and that waterfall effect has had that their larger companies are needing less space and less demand for leases, and so now the commercial real estate market is suffering with less demand, and we can thank this crash coming in the sector of the economy to COVID and lockdowns that triggered this whole work-from-home debate. It's, it's interesting you're saying that because when you look at numbers with commercial real estate, it says commercial real estate crisis still looming over the U.S. economy, and it's not going away. The U.S. economy faces looming threat of a commercial real estate market crash at $1.5 trillion in commercial mortgage debt is due by the end of 2025. Tighter credit conditions, higher borrowing costs, and declining property values due to remote work have increased the risk of default. Fitch ratings estimate that 35% of pooled securities commercial mortgages due to April, due between April and December of 2023, totaling, ready, $5.8 billion will not be able to be refinanced. Office and retail property valuations could potentially drop as much as 40% this year. Let me say that one more time. Office and retail property valuations, valuations could drop as much as 40% this year, Tom. That means a ten million dollar property is six million bucks. That's correct. Okay. According to Lisa Chalette, CIO of Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, it's not like it's a regular person saying this. These are people who know. And what's that last bullet say? Check Small and regional banks holding about eighty percent of commercial real estate market outstanding debt are the main source of credit. The industry of people could lead to more restrictive lending standards, making it harder for businesses and households to obtain loans. And by the way, this is why, and I'll say this openly, I'm long on J.P. Morgan stock because if those small regional banks keep going to J.P. Morgan, small regional banks fail. Who's got the best credit rating and the best capital structures for them for the pick it up? J.P. Morgan. So you're saying buy stock now? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I'm in. I'm just said. Okay. I, I said it openly so I could be disclosed. Got I'm you. long J.P. Morgan, but the reason I'm long J.P. Morgan is I believe they're about to take advantage of the additional losses that are going to happen in small and regional banks who are holding the credit. Because who does the banks in downtown L.A.? Glendale Federal and other people like that. It's the local economy yeah. that have those big commercial dollars. Who does Suarez go to help the economy? You know, d down in Miami with big about bank lending, SunTrust. You know, that's who he goes to. These are local partners building up local cities, and they're about to get you know uh, local local shots in the chops. Yeah, we've already. Said, I mean, when you say J.P. Morgan, you're talking about J.P. Morgan Chase, who's the CEO of that. Jamie Dimon. The writing's been on the wall. How many? Regional banks has he already gobbled up, right? How many? How much money has moved to the big banks? But Pat, let me touch on that first story. He's you talked capitalized about. to do it exactly. Yeah, he's yeah. got the money. Is basically what it is. It's so funny here. Uh, this first story that half the world's biggest companies are downsizing office space. <laughs> I've never heard this this term before. "Quote unquote office first. What does that remind you of a little bit? America first. Mm -hmm. Office first. Yeah. There's a metaphor here. 
it's it's almost like you talked about this on the on the uh, Andrew Schultz podcast. Shout out to Andrew Schultz, by the way, and his, and his squad. Great podcast. But you said you said, what's wrong with being a nationalist? You know, nationalist gets a bad name. Obviously, we know some yeah. certain. Then when you hear nationalism, funny the, the, mustache the, the, guy. Yeah, there's a funny yeah. mustache guy. But what's wrong with loving your country? What's wrong with loving America? What's the opposite of nationalist? You said globalist. And we're seeing the Klaus Schwab's of the world, the World Economic Forum here. There's a storyline here. Office first. Get your ass in the office. Work, right? Versus globalism. Work from anywhere. Work from home. Don't come into the office. Don't have any contact with people you're working with. What are we talking about here? There's no borders. Why borders? There's a metaphor here, right? But I think it's important to see here that 55% of companies are actually going to increase their office space. What we're realizing is you need to be adaptable. You need to be flexible. And there is a happy medium here. Some people, they can, I mean, how many people that work for PHP don't work in the home office, right? They work all across the country, but they do have satellite offices, regional offices. I think that the, the, where we're at today, the sign of the times being adaptable and flexible is what works for you? What works for your company? A company knows, all right, 10 to 20%, we're going to downsize here. Maybe they don't need to be here. 55%, no, your ass is going to be in the office here. There is a storyline here. Nationalists, globalists, work from anywhere, office first. At the end of the day, the, the, there is a, it's a very nuanced discussion here. It's not black and white. Zoom, everything with technology, people can work from anywhere. But at the end of the day, culture, you know, what does it say? Culture eats what for breakfast? Strategy. Cul culture eats strategy for breakfast. Hey, if you enjoyed this short clip, you want to watch the whole thing, click over here. But if you want to make 2023 the beginning of the greatest years of your life, I host a conference once a year. It's called the Vault Conference, where 3,000 CEOs, executive entrepreneurs from around the world come together to strategize for three and a half days. This year, it's going to be at Miami Diplomat Resort. And the speakers this year is going to be Tom Brady. He'll be there. I'll be interviewing him. Mike Tyson, Will Gadara, the guy that ran 11 Madison in New York. If you run a business, if you're a CEO, entrepreneur, and executive, this is not an event you want to miss out on. Get yourself, your spouse, your business partner, your running mates registered, and I look forward to seeing you there. Click on the link here or see the link in the description, and I hope to spend three and a half days with you in Miami in August and September. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.